Hello, this is Gaurav Shah from School of DevOps and in this video, I'm going to talk about the three most important technologies that you should learn if you are a DevOps engineer or a DevOps guy in 2008. Now, if this were a stock market, these were would be my like multi-bagger recommendations, right? So this is going to reap you a lot of benefits if you know uh, these technologies, if you add it to your skill set and that they're going to help you for next few years for sure. That's something I can, you know, I, I can definitely predict. And our predictions have been pretty, uh, pretty uh, well on mark uh, in past as well. You can look at our uh, DevOps uh, surveys and DevOps reports, which I'm going to link below in the description uh, to really get an idea about uh, what we predicted in uh, two years ago and so on, right? Now, the first technology that I'm going to recommend for a DevOps engineer this year is Ansible. Now, Ansible really is, you know, it's, it's been a fascinating technology. I've been using it for a while, for like more than five years now, uh, four years now. And um, if I had recommended Ansible like a couple of years ago, I actually did that for a lot to a lot of clients. But at that time, they were sort of reluctant to use it for a couple of reasons. One is it was not like owned by companies like Red Hat that it is now. So definitely there's a lot of credibility to Ansible in the market today than two years uh, before or like three years before rather. Uh, that's one reason. Second is a technology has to also have a hype value in order for you know the market uh, to have a lot of demand, right? Uh, like three years ago, um, it was mostly Puppet and Chef, which was popular. So even though it did not make sense to a lot of clients, a lot of environments, because I, I in, you know, I knew that this is probably not a tool that uh, is going to suit the best uh, for a particular organization or particular environment, because uh, in some cases, Ansible works really, really well. In other cases, Puppet and Chef works really perfectly fine. So in all cases, like in like a couple of years ago, until until then, um, the companies would just use Puppet and Chef because there was a huge hype value behind, you know, behind it. And um, if you were not doing Chef or Puppet, you were sort of left out, right? So nobody was willing to uh, listen about this new cool technology, useful technology that is Ansible uh, then. But now it's a different story. A lot of organizations, in fact, who were using Chef and Puppet are also moving towards Ansible now. And then there are a lot of newer organizations or new uh, the companies who were not on automation path. Um, they're starting their automation path with Ansible. And that's going to continue for the next few years. That's what I really believe. So if you want to learn, um, you know, the f uh, new technology uh, in the DevOps world, you should definitely know about Ansible or learn Ansible. That's the first thing. Second and third are quite related. The second technology that I'm going to talk about is Docker because Docker is actually revolutionizing the way we are delivering the software. Just the way real world containers revolutionized uh, the shipping industry in general. So now in today's world, if you want to, you know, transport some goods from one part of the world to the other part of the world, as long as you can fit it into a container, everybody knows how to handle it. There is a standardization across the globe. Uh, the way the containers are managed, you can put it on a truck, put it on a train, put it on a ship. There are tools which have been created. Uh, there are dockyards which um, know how to handle those containers really, right? The same thing is happening in the world of software delivery. So as long as in today's world, as long as you can take your application and package it in a container format, that is a container image, everybody else would know how to handle it. So you can really build a container image on your laptop, but it will work the same way um, on some other environment, in a QA environment, on a CI environment, in production or pre-production environment, or a client's location, right? So it gives you that kind of standardization. And it also comes with the complete ecosystem when you want to build images, whether you want to build images, whether you want to test it, there are some frameworks to do that. You want to set up a serverless architecture, there are frameworks to do that. Uh, you want to run it at scale. There are orchestration engines uh, which are available as well. So Docker is something that you should definitely, definitely know. If you just want to pick one technology, I would recommend that you should start with Docker. Now, the third tool is quite related to Docker because Docker is good for uh, doing the local development and building these images and, uh, you know, um, trying things out and it gives you the portability and standardization, right? Uh, but when you want to really take this to the next level and start implementing in a production or production-like environments, 
you're not going to run it on one single host. You'll probably have a bunch of servers um, on which you're going to run these containers on. So you'll have a data center or a cloud environment where you're going to orchestrate these containers on. And that's where you need a container orchestration engine. Uh, I'm going to link a video here um, which you can look at um, that talks about the introduction to Kubernetes, why you really need Kubernetes. Uh, but Kubernetes is the standard in the world of container orchestration today. And that's going to remain for the next few years and there's really dearth of professionals, the skilled professional um, in these fields including Ansible, Docker and Kubernetes. So if you know about these tools and if you have a background of managing infrastructures and if you know about Linux and uh, infrastructure in general and automation in general, you'll be in great demand in the next, you know, in the coming future and today and, and coming future as well. So you should definitely grab this opportunity, learn these tools and, um, you know, um, get started with your DevOps career or accelerate your DevOps career uh, to the great, le great length and th those tools are going to be very, very useful for you. Having said that, uh, School of DevOps does offer um, some courses on uh, these tools. If you want to get started, we have some free courses uh, which are again linked in the description below. So you may want to check out our free courses. We also do have premium courses which can help you master those technologies as well as appear for the certifications related to these because each of this technology Ansible has a certification from Red Hat, Docker has a certification from Docker Inc. Uh, Kubernetes has a certification from CNCF which is Cloud Native you know, uh, compute foundation. So you should definitely consider those certifications as well. And uh, some of our course might just help you with that as well. So those are the three multi-bagger recommendations that I have in terms of the DevOps technologies in 2008. If you like this content, do share, subscribe, and give a thumbs up to us. Um, tell us what kind of content that you would like to see as well. And um, with that, I'm going to conclude this video. Thanks a lot and see you in another one. If you like this content, do like, share and subscribe. You may also find links to our free courses in the description below along with some special offers for our premium courses. You could also visit us at schoolofdevops.com.